Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel's live stream. We're glad that you're here with us this morning. Um, we are gathering together to to worship God, to, to focus on um, some texts. We got those across the bottom of the screen. So um, throughout the service, just just try to pull those up either on a device or, uh, or in a Bible that you might have. Um, but we're excited to go through those things. Uh, and we're excited that you're here with us. Yeah. And so on this Trinity Sunday, let's let's bow our heads. Let's bow our hearts. Let's welcome the King of Kings. Heavenly Father, as we gather here, I give you thanks that you meet us, that you love us. In a world that is broken, Lord Jesus, you come with arms outstretched to, to welcome us and not to rebut us. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the Holy Spirit. We give you thanks for the spirit that, that is our comforter and our counselor. Oh, Holy Spirit, we ask that you rest upon our gathering this morning, but more importantly, and just as important, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd rest upon our nation, that you'd breathe, bring the love of Christ, that you'd breathe kindness into our land. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we gather here, I, I thank you for the music that will proclaim your truth. I thank you for your word and the creed that reminds us of the bedrock of our faith. And I, cel and I celebrate the saints who gather to rejoice in Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. So if you haven't, uh, if you haven't done this with us before or uh, just forgot how this goes, um, we'll take care of a couple of announcements here at the beginning here. Um, and then after that, go into a time of music, and then uh, Pastor Craig will take care of our reading and um, and give us a message. Uh, we uh, we are moving our our live stream kind of strategy a little bit, and so um, moving forward, we won't have a Tuesday night um, live stream anymore on a regular basis, at least. Um, and we're going to move to just live streaming on Thursdays. And so uh, that will start to alternate between prayer nights and between worship nights. It'll still be at 7 p.m., um, but just wanted to give you a heads up. And then uh, if you could, uh, these platforms are all built to uh, really reward liking and sharing. So um, if you just wanted to take a moment right now and, and like and share uh, this stream um, so that uh, all these different social media platforms and video platforms uh, can can tell that something important is happening here. That's 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 how they find out. But if you yeah. do that, that'd be great. And as Zach mentioned, you know we're changing from Tuesday to Thursday because this Tuesday at twelve and this Wednesday at seven p.m. we're going to have our devotion, Holy Communion time. So remember that Jillian sent out emails and information about that. Please note that. Please note that at, um, on Tuesday and Wednesday that will be going on. Also, just want to remind you that on Wednesday from 9 to 12, on Wednesday from 9 to 12 is our food drive. So Karen says the need for NECOM is still big. So please, if you want to drop those off. And the new portals of prayer will be back. When we started this food drive, um, we had it went off. It's been a whole quarter of this crazy COVID time. So remember, you can pick up the portals of prayer um, on Wednesday from 9 to 2 also. And then the last announcement, Tuesday, Zach, Jillian, Pastor Tyler, and I would love to meet with some folks that have an interest in technology, social media, streaming, all of that. So please, if you have an interest, if you have computer skills, camera skills, any of those things, please um, be here Tuesday at 7 p.m. Bring a mask with you and we'll talk, we'll equip, we'll answer all your questions. So that's going on also. Those are our announcements. Um, I ask you just pray for our community. Pray for the people who are hurting and the, the police officers who are, who are serving. Pray for um, the, the widows and the orphans and the outcasts. Mm -hmm. um, just want to encourage you to be a person of prayer um, this coming week. And we're going to be looking at the Apostles' Creed today. No Athanasian Creed. I know some of you are bummed. You love the Athanasian Creed on Trinity Sunday. But we're going to be looking at the Apostles' Creed today. So let's join together in confessing that. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. That's what we believe, and now we celebrate that in song also. Let's join our hearts. I just want to encourage you, don't just sit on the couch or the lazy boy. Sing with Zach. Celebrate with Zach. Proclaim the love of Christ as we join in these songs. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life, you are love, you bring light. Darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lives, so we pour out our praise. We pour out. Us. 
spring up Oh well, Holy Spirit deep within us Rise, 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 rise Your love will never fail You are steadfast Your promises are true Cover all my sins with forgiveness My eyes have seen your ways, your goodness Love and faithfulness meet We behold your glory Righteousness and peace kiss Heaven's all around us deep within us In the land of the living We'll see your goodness In the land of the living We'll see your goodness In the land of the living We'll see your goodness In the land of the living Our scripture reading for this morning uh, is found in Acts chapter 2, um, and we're going to start with verse 14, and then we're going to hop down to uh, verses 22 through 36. Here's verse 14. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed to them, Fellow Israelites, listen to these words. This Jesus of Nazareth was a man attested to you by God with miracles, wonders, and signs that, did, that God did among you through him, just as you yourselves know. Though he was delivered up according to God's determined plan and foreknowledge, you used lawless people to nail him to a cross and kill him. God raised him up ending the pains of death because it was not possible for him to be held by death. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. Moreover, my flesh will rest in hope because you will not abandon me in Hades or allow your Holy One to see decay. You have revealed the paths of life to me. You will fill me with gladness in your presence. 
brothers and sisters, I can confidently speak to you about the patriarch David. He is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him to seat one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke concerning the resurrection of the Messiah. He was not abandoned in Hades, and his flesh did not experience decay. God has raised this Jesus. We are all witnesses of this. Therefore, since he has been exalted to the right hand of God and has received from the God has received the Father the promised Holy Spirit, he has poured out what you both see and hear. For it was not David who ascended into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord declared to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know with certainty that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your love Your love surrounds us You're the reason we came To encounter your love Your love in 
dances all around But the Spirit of the Lord is here At this time we are going to collect offering um, and uh, there's a there's a peculiarness to Christianity in that we lay our lives down. We give everything back to God um, out of a place of joy, not not out of a place of obligation or a, a, a place of condemnation or trying to earn his favor, but instead out of a recognition uh, of joy, uh, we lay all things down. Um, and so... Uh, I just think that this song does a great job at capturing the joy found in laying yourself down. With this heart open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. With these hands Lifted I hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice. I will bring a sacrifice. I lay me down, I'm not my own, I belong to you. Lay me down, lay me down Oh, hand on my heart, this much is true There's no life apart from you Lay me down, lay me down Letting go my pride, giving up all my right, take this light and let it shine. Take this light and let it shine. I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down Oh, and on my heart this much is true There's no life apart from you Lay me down, lay me down It will be my joy to say Your will your way, it will be my joy to say. Your will, your way, it will be my joy to say. Your will, your way, always. It will be my joy to say. Your will. Your way will be my joy to say Your will, your way will be my joy to say Your will, your way, always I lay me down, I'm not my own I belong to you alone Lay me down, lay me down Oh, and on my heart this much is true There's no life apart from you Lay me down, lay me down Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to Pastor Craig, uh, who is going to read our next uh, scripture reading for us. Pastor Craig, it's over to you. And our gospel lesson for today is Jesus' last words to the church um, as he ascended. It's the Great Commission, Matthew 28. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We join with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for this moment to, to hear your words and your promises, this time to gather with brothers and sisters from all over to remember who you are, how great you are, how loved we are by you. Oh, Spirit, strengthen our faith in the one God, in three persons. Of course, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, I'm going to be looking at that, a reading, a passage in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, where God says, Let us create man in our image. And then the reading from Matthew that we just heard in Matthew 28, verse 19, where Jesus says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As I mentioned at the beginning, today's Trinity Sunday, and I hope you're excited. I hope you are fired up. Isn't this a great day? This is Trinity Sunday. We've come to this day to celebrate our God. And, and it, as you can probably tell, I am pretty excited by this. I, I have enjoyed this past week looking at the Trinity because of an aspect that I have seen lacking in, in the news and in the world. Trinity Sunday is a celebration that there is one God in three persons. There's this incredible unity. They are so united that three persons can make one God. What a unity that is. And I think we could safely say we as a nation are not experiencing unity like that. And we want unity, don't we? We want that unity. But in our land today, there's a lot of division and distrust. There's a lot of division. And distrust for authorities and, and govern, governing authorities and politicians and crowds and coughs. This is a huge time, not of unity, but of division and distrust. And I don't know about you, I love unity. And I think I think most people want unity. I believe that most people long for unity. And the question before us today is, where can we find unity that transforms, that shapes and changes us? Where do we find such unity? We find such unity in a tri Un God. Try three and, and union. Three persons and yet one God. We find this transforming unity in God. He can, he can bless us and he, he can change us. And he can remind us of who we are. That we are God's people. We, the very core, and that's what the Apostles' Creed reminds us, at the very core, we are God's people because he has made us and he has redeemed us and he has sanctified us. Now we, we may, 
within the church, we may have different views and different preferences on certain things. Pastor Tyler, two weeks ago, talked about that. that but as a church, we have unity. We might not have uniformity, but we have unity. Even though we have different preferences. Why do we have this unity? We have this unity because we are loved. And now we love. We are cared for by God. And now we care for others. God has shared his only begotten son with us. And that's why on Wednesday from 9 to 12, we'll gather food to share with others. We have this unity in who and what God has done for us. And, and we desire unity in all of God's creation, don't we? This past week and a half, the past 400 years of our nation, when there hasn't been unity, it troubles us, doesn't it? It stirs us. Disunity hurts. It hurts us. And so we need a triune God. Trinity Sunday, we oftentimes have the Athanasian Creed. That is a long creed. We're going to be looking at the Apostles' Creed, the shortest of the three ecumenical creeds. And I want to look at just three phrases in the Apostles' Creed and then ponder three thoughts. The first thing I want to look at is the, the history of the Apostles' Creed. Why do we have the Apostles' Creed? Where did it come from? It did not come from, as you might think by the title, from the Apostles. It probably took place in a scene kind of like this. It's 275 AD. We're in the city of Alexandria, Egypt, in northern Egypt. And there's a boy who has heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, who has heard that he is loved by Yeshua. And that gospel fills him. And, and for the last few weeks and months, he's been learning of the Christian faith. And now he's about to be baptized. This dark-skinned boy with a white garment over him before he's baptized, is asked to confess his faith. He says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ. See, the founding of the Apostles' Creed most likely flowed out of churches as they were teaching the faith. Those who would be baptized would, would summarize the Christian faith and they would develop a creed that was the beginning point for what we have now as the Apostles' Creed. And it has been the creed, one of the creeds of the churches. Around 500 AD, a few hundred years after this scene in Alexandria, now we see the formal written Apostles' Creed. And the Apostles' Creed is the most used Christian creed around the world. The Nicene Creed is older. But the Apostles' Creed is the most shared creed in the Christian church. And so what's its purpose? That's its history. What's its purpose? Why do we have the creed? The word creed flows out of the Latin word credo, which simply means I believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty. This is our creed, our credo, what we confess. And because the Christian faith is a thoughtful faith, they needed to proclaim what we believe, a creed that speaks of our faith. And so the Apostles' Creed it summarizes the Christian faith of what we believe. The Nicene Creed focuses on the divinity, the, the Godhead of Jesus, that Jesus was true God. And then the Athanasian Creed focused on the Trinity of God. Not, one, not three gods, but one God. 
And so those creeds are just a, a confession of what we believe. And sometimes you might hear someone say, well, I have no creed but the Bible. That in and of itself is a, a creedal statement, we could say. And then everything has to go back to the word of God. The creeds, it's called the Apostles' Creed because that is what the apostles taught. But a creed is something that doesn't change. If there is no confession, if there is no creed, if you just go with what one person teaches, then that person can take you anywhere. But a creed serves as something solid and certain where we're not blown hither and yon by everyone's desire and teaching. It connects us. In the Lutheran church, we have creed, the three creeds, but then we also have confessions. The Augsburg Confession is one of those, and I'll touch on that a little bit later. But it's interesting, living here in West Michigan, there's a lot of Dutch reform. And I came across the story of one of their creeds, their, their confessions. The Belgic Confession flew up, came out of a time when, when the Dutch Reformed Church, like the Lutheran Church, the Protestant churches, were under persecution. And in the 16th century, a Dutch Reformed city was under attack for heresy. And as the city was surrounded and the walls were keeping the, the invading army out, this Dutch reformed reformer by the name of Guido de Bries, I love that name, Guido de Bries, he penned the Belgic Confession. And then he takes this confession, this truth that he had, and I love what he does with it. He takes this confession, this book that he wrote, confessing their faith as they're under attack, and he throws it over the wall. He doesn't throw rocks. He doesn't throw arrows. He throws the truth as he sees it over the walls as his great defender. I love that picture. That what we believe and teach is also that which can protect and save us. Here, read this. And he throws it to the opposing army. And so that's the purpose of a creed. So what's its message? In the Apostles' Creed, we celebrate the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In a sense, a creed can defend our faith, but most importantly, a creed is there to declare our faith. When the Lutheran reformers were under attack, their big hope and prayer is what, that the Augsburg Confession would be read by the emperor and the princes. And they wouldn't, and they wouldn't, and they wouldn't. And then they said, okay, we'll read it. And the Lutheran reformers rejoiced because our faith is being declared. The truth of what we believe in Jesus is being made known. See, our faith is always to be declared and shared. That's the message of a creed. And so I want us to ask at the last part of this sermon, do we need a new creed? Do we need a new creed for this time? Do we need something a, a little fresher? Do we need something that, that spices up the Christian faith a little bit more for this day and proclaims what we believe today? Are we facing new are we facing first time ever? Are we facing unfamiliar heresies at this time? And thus we need a new creed. You know the answer to that. The problems we are facing are nothing new. The false teachings of this day, the church has faced before. 
the disunity that we're experiencing in this land. It's not the first time we've had to wrestle with division and discord and anger and hatred and mistrust. It's not. The early church knew that. The early church experienced that. The early church, when they had this division between the Jew and the Gentile, had to work through unity. As our nation is still today. I don't think we need a new creed. What I think we need is to remember the old creed. To hold on to something in this day from that creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I would propose that we need to remember that God is the maker of heaven and earth, that he is the one who created all things. I saw a video that the skit guys put together, and they had all different faces. They had all different faces on this video, and they were going through fast and fast. And the amazing thing is I looked at these faces, and they were totally different was at the end they reminded us that they are all loved by God. That every single face is a part of God's creation. And that he loves them all equally and the same. He is the maker of all people. And in the human heart, we like to think, well, I'm in charge. I'm in charge. If you're tempted to think that you're in charge, I just want to say something to you. You haven't made diddly. You haven't. You haven't made diddly compared to what God made. He made the heavens and the earth. Just read Genesis chapter 1. And tell me if you get close to making what God has made. When I was in Pensacola, one of our members, her brother-in-law was a pastor a Lutheran pastor in the South. And she told me 10 years, 15 years before I got down there that that one Sunday he was preaching that all all people are God's people. That Sunday, people broke into his house, dragged him out of the home with his wife and children screaming, took him to a, a dump, beat him and left him for dead. That happened to him because he preached that there is a maker who created the heavens and the earth and every single person is a child of God. We need to remember that in this day. We also need to remember that in the creed we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord that we bow to Jesus, that we follow Jesus, that we trust in God alone. That's our truth. Jesus Christ, our Lord. We do not bow. We do not bow to politicians. We we do not bow believe that political causes are greater than the love of Christ and the truth of Christ and the word of Christ and the body of Christ. We do not align ourselves with celebrities and allow them to define who we are. We know that we are not inerrant, all-knowing, and perfect in all of our ways. We are not. Jesus is the Lord of our life. And everything we do should bring honor and glory to him. So the question is, are you following Jesus? Are you this day following Jesus? Do you know that you have been purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ? Have you put your faith and your trust 
in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Do you love what Jesus loved? Do you? Do you love what Jesus loved? For he is your Lord. How is Jesus the Lord of your life? How is Jesus manifesting himself as the Lord of your life? And in Jesus Christ is only and in Jesus Christ our Lord. And then the third phrase I want to pause at that we need to remember. We don't need a new creed. We need to remember the Apostles' Creed, the communion of saints, that there is one holy apostolic church, that there is a communion, a common union of God's people. And we have always taught that in the church. In the Lutheran church, we believe that if you have faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we might disagree in other things, but if you have faith in Jesus Christ, whether you go to an AME church, a Roman Catholic church, a Lutheran church, if you have faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are part of the communion of saints. We are brothers and we are sisters, united in Christ Jesus. And so do we need a new creed? No. There's such beauty in that Apostles' Creed. The communion of saints. Whether you're black or white or brown, there is one Christ, there is one Savior, there is one Lord, there is one family created by God. And that is a colorful family, a diverse family. Yesterday, I was with Pastor Leone in Virginia. And I said, Pastor Leone, Virginia, do I treat you as a brother and sister in Christ? And they said, yeah, you're good. And I said, I always want to treat you as my brother and my sister in Christ. Why? Because I believe and I confess the communion of saints. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker, and he made everything. He made every single person. And that person has beauty and that person has value and is precious to God. It's Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday the triune God, the one God in three persons. May we, the body of Christ, model that unity, proclaim that unity, share that unity, rejoice. The church is a colorful family with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the unity that you have, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Grant us that same unity, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now I, I want us to pray for the church, for our nation. And as I'm praying, I'm going to pause for a moment. I just want you to voice, it, whether it's with your lips or with your heart, I just want to give you a moment just to pray what's on your heart also. So let's bow our heads and our hearts for prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we give you faith for the faith to believe that by your incredible grace, you have called us out of darkness into the light of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we, we praise you for the unity that you have, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so united that three persons make up one Godhead. All Almighty God, grant unity upon our nation, where so oftentimes we are divided by, by trivial things. 
Let the miracle of your creation guide us and draw us together. Heavenly Father, we celebrate that Jesus was a friend of sinners, that we are called to care for the widows and the orphans, for the weakest. Lord, give us that heart. Whether it's gathering food on Wednesday or befriending somebody in our neighborhood who's lonely, Heavenly Father, let us look after the widows and the orphans. We pray, Lord, that you would be with those who are hurting. We, we pray for, for Mark as he's undergoing tests for a liver transplant. We pray for the Boomershine family. We pray for strengthening for those who are undergoing cancer treatments. Lord Jesus, rest your hand of healing upon those who are hurting. We pray for the body of Christ. We pray for the Christian church. Lord, grant us boldness. Grant us a, a steadfast faith. Grant us peace. Peace not because we hide away or cloister ourselves, but a peace because we know that there is a God, the Father Almighty, who made the heavens and the earth. Heavenly Father, breathe your spirit, the spirit of Jesus upon the church that we may awaken from these days of division, knowing that by grace we are united to you and you have taught us to pray our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Trinity Sunday, I, I pray that that unity that God has and that love and that you are grafted into the family of God, us Gentiles are loved by the maker of heaven and earth. That is a very good thing. And now receive the blessing. Have a great week. I'll see some of you on Tuesday or Wednesday. Others know that I love you. And I know that all of us have different levels of re-engagement. That is perfectly fine. Um, but I look forward to seeing you all, you all soon. Now receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon each and every one of you and give to you his eternal peace. Amen. Have a great week. Bye-bye.